So uh, welcome everyone to the, the Hyperlayer Global Forum and to my presentation around a blockchain interoperability, a demo using Cactus. My name is Enrique Alcázar and I'm the tech product manager at Accenture. I'm currently working with Cactus. So the first thing that we want to address before we get to the code, it's why you would want or why would someone want to use Cactus? There are three main points. The first one being that uh, we want to address blockchain fragmentation. Uh, blockchains were designed with the idea of uh, destroying silos. And now we just have tons of different networks that are siloed from each other. Cactus can help th those different networks talk to each other. Uh, it also saves the application developers from having to reinvent the wheel every time they want to do something new. Every time they want to do something, every time they want to iterate over what they have. And finally, they heavily lower the risk of adopting specific DLT technologies by businesses. This means that if today you choose to build your application on top of a specific blockchain protocol, let's say that you build your solution on top of Fabric and you have a client that just has a, a, a BESU network and they want you to move to their hyperlayer BESU network, you can do so with close to zero effort. And uh, we can do this thanks to the concept of uh, plugins and thanks to how we are using uh, the, all of those plugins. Uh, here on the uh, top left, we are seeing uh, the most simple example of a plugin that we have, and that is the Keychain plugin. Specifically, is the Keychain memory plugin. This is a plugin that's just purely used to, uh, to store data and memory and uh, to, in order to make this accessible to other plugins. Sometimes we emulate processes such as key management directly when, within this uh, plugin kitchen memory. But again, the power here of the plugins is that you can do this during development because as you can see, it's trivially easy to use. Uh, we just have, uh, we, we just define a map where we are defining, for example, the uh, contract ABIs that we are gonna be using. And then we can store if we want uh, into this map, uh, more uh, more contract ABIs for different functions that we may want to use. So contract name, and at the right here we have the JSON when we are using the Kitchen plugin. The advantage of using plugins in this manner is that if tomorrow we want to store this all of these ABIs instead of uh, in, let's say, uh, on the memory itself, we want to store them onto a specific cloud provider's environment. We do have uh, plugin keychains that are uh, that allow you to connect to those environments. And just by changing the keychain plugin definition that we have here, you will automatically be storing all of this information, uh, whatever you want. And again, if you have a specific place that's right now not part of the, that there's not a Cactus plugin for that just yet, it's as easy as uh, implementing the same interface, uh, which are all defined and are all as trivial as possible. And just by defining uh, that interface, you can uh, you can have all of your code that you did for a POC compatible for a uh, production, just by basically updating and upgrading uh, where the calls are made, where the connector reside. This is something really, really important. Um, that's another principle that we have in Cactus is that it has to be uh, secure and it has to be integral by default. We'll see what that means later on. Here we have a more core plugin to Cactus, which are the connectors themselves. The plugin connectors are the plugins that are in charge of speaking with the different uh, blockchain protocols. In this case, we are seeing the, the plugin for Hyperlayer Besu. And as you can see, we do more or less uh, the same stuff that we do when, when we are using Web3. We want to keep that compatibility with the most popular tools out of the box. So behind the scenes, Cactus is still using all of those tools. Um, and here on the right, we can see how we are invoking a contract. You can see that we are using the same connector. And uh, we, are, we, we just have to define the, the contract name, the keychain ID, the signing credential, because we might want to change this, say for a for a signing credential that's on, on HashiCorp Vault, the invocation type, the method name and the parameters that we're calling. 
something that you may already notice here if you've been working on this for a while is that uh, all of these things that we are seeing here they are compatible across most dlt protocols what this means is that if tomorrow as we said before you want to change from Beso to fabric you simply change what the what the plugin connector looks like here and then you just do a replace uh, to say that you are using instead of a web3 signing credential you're using a hashicorp signing credential for example uh, you do a replace for your invocation type so you use an invocation type compatible with fabric and your whole application and your whole stack just works and still works in the exact same way we also have the concept of plugin registries or applications can be made the back end of your application can be made basically by just putting plugins together including the business logic which can be defined in a plugin as we're going to see now so we're going to go through an example uh, which is going to showcase three different entities that are interacting with each other through a supply chain uh, that each of them are connected exclusively to their own uh, blockchain network so right now on my machine i'm running three blockchain networks one for hyperlayer Vesu, one for go, go quorum and another one for hyperlayer fabric each of them has a separate role and we're going to be seeing how we can create an asset on Vesu. Uh, we can turn that asset into a different asset in, into quorum and how we can ship that uh, using fabric so here on the first one uh, i i'm right now i have the role of the bamboo harvester and i can submit a new bamboo harvest details when i create this it appears here and now this is only in the scope of my hyperlayer best network now if i go to the if i want to create a bookshelf uh, here I can select which bamboo harvest I want to use for that uh, for that hyperlay uh, uh, from the hyperlayer base network. Let's use I believe this one is the one that I just created. And I obviously this is uh, the, I can configure any any data that I want that I have defined in my smart contract, which we'll see later on. And here I have created my bookshelf and I want to ship it using fabric because the shipment uh, companies, they use fabric. So here I just define my bookshelf that I just created and I click on submit and there it appears. So here what we've shown is how we can use uh, three different, is how we can have uh, the same application with three different entities or members of the same consortium across three different DLTs agree uh, that a bamboo harvest was created, that it was used for something, uh, it was consumed, and uh, that it was shipped to a specific part, to a specific place. Now, going back to the, to the presentation, uh, here we can see what the smart contracts look like. Uh, there are basically Solidity smart contracts here. We're showing the smart contracts for uh, the, the, the best one quorum ones, because this demo we're going to focus on that. And basically, we can insert records. We can recover all of the records. And uh, yeah, the same thing for, for both of them. Just that one is the, for the bamboo harvest, and the other one is for the, for the bookshelves themselves. Uh, the model for the uh, bookshelf entity, for example, is the one that defined uh, that bookshelves has a number of shelves, as we've seen in the demo. Uh, the connector themselves, uh, it's this is probably and, and with some luck the one that you will have to actually uh, touch, uh, only use and never modify, because we are working on supporting as many protocols as possible, not just the most popular ones. But if obviously if there is no a support right now for a specific protocol that you're using you will have to implement your own uh, i plugin ledger connector as we're seeing here with the functions that we have here and uh, it, when we actually use it when we when we create it you can see that behind the scenes we're still using web3 you can see that we are still using a, a, the, the, a plugin registry as we've said before in order to to leverage uh, prometheus metrics collections and uh, we do some logging behind the scenes. But whenever you are invoking a function, as we've seen, uh, we are using Web3 behind the scenes. 
So it's basically an abstraction ledger as well for the for all of the popular SDKs that are used to develop blockchain applications. The business logic is maybe a little bit more more complicated to to understand and to go through. Uh, here we can see again how we are creating a, a plugin ledger connector uh, in order to send transactions. And uh, here on the right we have the the full registry that we were using for the demo application that we just saw. We are using the plugin consortium manual, which allows us to manage consortiums, which is leverage for the demo that we just saw. We need to create meta consortiums now if we have different networks involved. And in here, uh, you can define the keys that you're using for that consortium. Uh, you can define uh, where that consortium is stored, where is the consortium database, where we are pulling, where we are going to be pulling information from, etc. And uh, here we have a, a new supply, uh, a supply chain cactus plugin, uh, which is basically the business logic plugin that was developed for uh, this application. It's important to say that you don't have to create a business plugin for your application, a business logic plugin for your application if you don't want. You can develop them uh, in the traditional way and just leverage the, the connectors individually, as we've seen before. But by doing things this way, uh, we create a really consistent and cohesive way to interact with their application end to end. Uh, what does this look? What does this look? Well, basically, the supply chain plugin that I have defined on my code, I can see that uh, that it's going to be using three different clients. Uh, that it that it's going to have a, a Web3 signing credential for the Beson Quorum components, and uh, from the front end. Uh, if in my business logic plugin, I just basically implement, for example, the functionality to insert bamboo harvest endpoints uh, directly from the front end, I can just call uh, supply chain API dot whichever method, whichever method I want to call in here. And this, this means that uh, just from me clicking the bottom of uh, confirming the creation, the front end developer only needs to say that he wants to do this and behind the scenes. This is using uh, the business logic plugin, which is using the different connectors plugins, which uh, are using the different signer and signing mechanisms. So what this could translate to a production ready application is a line of code for the front end developer. And we are securely invoking a smart contract by securely connecting to a node, but also by securely signing that transaction, whatever we want. For example, we have a connector for HashiCorp Vault, so you could be signing your transaction into uh, HashiCorp Vault itself just by clicking a button on the on the front end. So yeah, uh, we've seen the demo. Uh, here you have a couple of links if you want to try to to run this into your own environment. Uh, you will need a powerful machine specifically for this demo because this demo, as we said before, is running three different blockchain networks. And uh, the easiest way to, to run this and to test this is to uh, uh, run this, this, this command because as we've done for absolutely everything, everything in Cactus is dockerized. So uh, from our, our unit tests, uh, to our more complex uh, demo applications, to the individual plugins, you can instantiate and use and run everything as a microservice if you want as well, because everything uh, can live within a container. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically uh, that that's that's everything that we wanted to cover for the demo. Uh, if you want to try this out, the easiest way to do so is to join some of our daily pair programming sessions. You can visit that link and you can also just look into the Hyperlayer calendar schedule. And every day uh, we spend some time uh, with the community doing pair programming in case they have a specific problem. Uh, we can just, we jump into a line with them and we try to get their environment set up to, to try to help them build their first application. We are still working on Cactus, it's still, uh, a, a fairly uh, early stages in terms of its do documentation. Uh, so the best way to, to actually learn is getting your hands dirty and what better way to do so than actually working uh, with the, the, the maintainers of the solution. So we encourage everyone to talk to us through Rocket Chat, obviously, 
to join on the mainer list, obviously, as, as, as uh, everyone else. Uh, but if you are actually interested on, on doing some development with this, please do join these sessions and we'll be there to help you out. So that's everything for the, uh, for the presentation and the demo. And we just wanted to leave uh, around four minutes for, to, to quickly discuss any, any potential questions.